Welcome back to your future home brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. We get more than expected from a mortgage lender. Yeah, guys, according to equipment maker Water Damage Defense, 98% of basements here in the U.S. will experience some type of water damage during their lifetimes. So joining us to make sure that you ask the right questions when it comes to buying a home near the water is the owner and CEO of Rogers Healy Company, Rogers Healy. Rogers, great to have you back here on the show with us. So when it comes to buying your next house, maybe it's next to water. How much can agents tell us about the flood and water damage history on that property? Well, as much as they can tell you, and I think that, not I think, one of the biggest roles of a realtor is to disclose and to over communicate. So whether they have to or not, really just lies within how well they can sleep at night. So they need to tell you everything, everything that they know, but the problem with buying or selling a property in certain parts of the country, especially on the coast, is we don't know the past experiences. So it's good to just go find out as much as possible, which obviously He's still going to find a realtor that actually is educated in that neighborhood. What are the rules around disclosure? Does the seller have to disclose information about flooding or about water damage? They do if they know about it. But the problem with some of these places, especially like in Georgia, the Carolinas, maybe Virginia up on the East Coast, these houses might be two or three hundred years old, which means not only have the water levels gone down or risen, these places have turned hands multiple times over. So they might not know what happened 100 or 150 years ago. So. Yeah, they, what they know they have to disclose, but when it comes to that, I would encourage people looking to purchase to have a buyer's agent that specifically is looking out for just their interest. Okay, so if a buyer wants to do their own research, where should they look at first? Yeah, I mean, like FEMA is obviously a, a great way to go track it, but even with FEMA, it's not updated, you know, daily. And sometimes it's not up, even updated yearly. So having a realtor that really specializes in that neighborhood is going to give you guys the really the best advice possible. But the internet's a great tool. Another great tool is an insurance agent. You want to make sure you have an insurance agent that's going to go protect you because they're going to give you as much coverage as possible, especially in an area that's prone to flooding. What should you look at for in terms of government reported data? Yeah, again, FEMA. I mean, FEMA is the biggest tool, but they're not going to be a heavily funded agency that's going to have an unlimited budget for research. And again, if you guys are looking at places that are on the coast, maybe even around a, a lake or someone that's pro, prone to flooding or heavy rains, you're going to have to do a lot of your research on your own. With all of that being said, there's a common misconception about purchasing in a floodplain. If there's a 10 acre tract, if you're on a quarter acre on the water, majority of the land is still, is not going to be in a floodplain. That is insurable. You're not going to want to go build in an area that's going to be prone to heavy flooding. So yeah, just doing your research as much as, much as possible. And you know, what we've learned up until this point is location has always been the rule, but eventually for something by the water, it's probably gonna be elevation. The higher up you are, the safer bet you're gonna make. All right, so in, in, in uh, with addition to research, let's just say you live in a flood prone area. Is there anything you would recommend buyers do in terms of negotiating on that home? Yeah, ask for a raft, I, I, like a self inflatable raft. I'm just kidding. No, I, <laughs> I, I think just, just get, Get an idea of how much your insurance is going to cost. And I think that most homeowners insurance is a pretty reasonable rate. But when you're in an area like that, you're going to have a higher deductible and a higher premium. So try to work that into the contract. And that's why you want to have a bulldog realtor that's going to go negotiate on your behalf. But ask for that kind of stuff and also ask for a property history. The, the interesting about disclosures in the country is like in Texas, where we live, we, we have to disclose everything we know about. But there's some states where you only have to disclose what you've experienced since you've owned that property. But that doesn't mean you can't ask them for previous information. So finding out as much as possible is going to be crucial, but also make sure to offset your costs that are going to be you know, justifiably higher in a flood prone in a floodplain prone area. A lot of peace. Well, well, speaking of flood prone areas, what are some of those states where flooding is the most common? Yeah, so the, the East Coast. So you go to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, all the way up to New York, all the way down to Florida all the way down to Louisiana. Those places are the ones that you see the most on the news that are getting hit by hurricanes, by heavy flooding. And then, you know, the further west you get, even to California, you don't really see that kind of stuff happen. But um, yeah, just this stuff on the East Coast. All right, so our viewers obviously see that you're in the Dallas area. In your area, do you find that homes near water have less demand as a result? So Dallas is no longer by the water per se. Um, we, we definitely don't have oceanfront views. Uh, I think George Strait even saying oceanfront property in Arizona or in Texas. But yeah, there, there's a premium if there's water, but people don't move to places like Dallas or really Texas to have waterfront access. I think that's why the Carolinas, Georgia, the, the true southeast on the coast has a different kind of prestige with people that actually need that. Still though, Dallas is a really hot home market. What kinds of trends are you seeing there that you expect to extend maybe to the rest of the country? 
affordability. And, and like you guys talked about a couple segments ago, it, millennials are pushing the marketplace stronger than we've ever seen before. And they're actually starting to make purchases. So these guys that are turning 30, 32, having families, guys and gals, are actually starting to make home purchases too. So we've seen the biggest uptick and influx of buyers in my company's 15-year history we've ever seen. And the majority of those buyers are millennials. So that's going to go and change the rule of real estate as well with affordability. And I think that's also going to eventually, hopefully, stabilize the rent market, which has done this, because they all the millennials, for the most part, want to be in the urban core. Now they're starting to save money, whether they're putting 5% down or more. They're going to start making acquisitions on the on the purchase side of real estate. All right, fantastic insight for us. Rogers Healy, the CEO of Healy Property Management. Great to have you here, Rogers. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.